So Steve, how'd you get into this? So this was a, a spur of the moment thing a buddy of mine wanted to go and do. And uh, we went one summer in 20, 2012 and did our first jump tandem. How um, old were you? I was 23 at the time. I was 24 when I started the uh, full season though. So what, explain what full season means. It was the solo program. Solo certified to be right. able to basically wear one of these and jump on our own. Was... Okay, so not like doing a tandem jump where you're buckled into some yeah, exactly. instructor, right? So yeah, I'm talking about my first full season as like a solo. Right. <clears throat> Would have been 2013. I was 24, and yeah, I just fell in love. Been jumping ever since. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So explain to us what we're doing here. What what I see in front of me is a chute, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so yeah, right now I got it stretched out on your deck. Uh, I got to pack the main. So right now it's it's lined up, face down like it should be when you're about to start a pack job. What you want to do is run the lines up first. So it being face down, you got your brake lines are at the back or at the top. Then you got your I guess rear risers, your C's and D's, and your A's and B's are at the front. So you're kind of looking at the tail end of the parachute right now. This is what's called a uh, pro pack job. It's kind of done over the shoulder. There's different methods of packing. You can do flat packing, which is sort of on the ground, flat, if you will. So what are we doing there with that over your shoulder? So right now it's draped. This is the side of the parachute. You're looking at the right side of it because I've got it turned 90 degrees. This is my front, this is my tail. I gotta count the nose. This being a katana, it's got it's a nine cell canopy. It's got nine, nine cells. So you wanna count them, separate them. Packing a parachute is all about separating the lines from the fabric so that you get less damage on opening because these open at such a high speed. You're gonna get wear no matter what. But two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. So is that a possibility nine. of damage when these things open? Yeah, it's just minimizing that damage. They're always going to get damaged. Right. You just want to try and minimize it. Right, so it's all about what, how much wear and tear you're going with, right? Exactly, yeah. You want to kind of, these are expensive. This brand new is uh, 2200 bucks US. Ouch. So you don't want to be wrecking it too quickly uh, okay so uh, there's my follow-up question for you uh, is quality and the term um you get what you pay for oh certainly yeah <laughs> like now can somebody could you go on say amazon and buy something from the the country of china for 20 bucks and uh, be allowed to jump know. with that i've never seen it <laughs> i wouldn't personally want to uh Usually gear is shared between jumpers online or whatever, or you can buy it brand new from manufacturers and you're paying top dollar for brand new stuff. We That's share shit on, uh, sorry, can't swear. We share stuff online, uh, kind of used through Facebook groups and stuff and it makes it a little bit cheaper. Wow. Because people kind of hand down gear. You don't jump the same thing a million times either, or a thousand times rather. You kind of switch it up here and there. So now we want to, I was talking about separating the lines from the fabric. So if we look down into the parachute, we have our C's and D's at the back. I got the nose in between my legs, so the A's and B's are at the front. We want to start separating fabric from these lines here. And I'm just going to shove my... So this isn't, packing this chute isn't something that you learned overnight. Uh, no, it took lots of, uh, lots of practice. With somebody supervising you? Yep, of course. Yeah. It was um, all part of the solo course that I took. So here we got another set of lines. You don't mind me asking, what did that solo course run you? The course I took was 1600 bucks Canadian, plus yeah. tax. Yep. Yeah. And that included your first... And that was here in Ontario? It was, yeah. It was actually in Dundas, just a little town of Hamilton there. Yep. Yeah. These are always the hardest for me because I got short little arms. These longer ones. So now if you'll see, I've got all these lines stacked more or less. And all the fabric is tucked in back there. 
So we're gonna do the exact same thing on the left side. It's most, most visible looking down from my perspective, but I'll just get it sorted out quickly here. All right, so now I got those, uh, the tail end of the canopy on my right thumb. I am taking all this fabric, kind of neatening it up as you can see. It's all one color, so it's a little bit tough to decipher, but yeah, we got that tucked in there nicely. We take our last couple of lines, and like I said, this is where it gets tough with my T-Rex arms. We're just kind of separating all that. And stacking the lines. Now we want to quarter our slider. So this piece of fabric here, this square piece of fabric that runs down the lines and the parachute opens is to slow the opening. Okay, so now that we got our, all our lines stacked and separated from the fabric, we got this square piece of material here that you want to run all the way up as far as it can go on these grommets. It's your slider and it uh, you want to push it as far deep into the canopy, as high as it'll go, because this thing is the first uh, piece of fabric that's really gonna grab some air when this thing opens. And you want it all the way at the top of the lines because it's uh, it'll be a more comfortable opening with that all the way up so oh, it'll slide down. I got in. a dumb question for you, Steve. What's that? Um, are you, like, the fact that somebody watched this, say somebody watches this in the future, are you, uh, what would the word be, uh, uh, able to actually show somebody, teach, are you validated to teach somebody this? Or would that be termed, uh, would that actually be illegal? Or, you know what I mean? Uh, well, I don't have any coach ratings. I mean, I am pretty knowledgeable on packing. Um, right. This particular video I wouldn't take as an instructional video whatsoever because yeah, you're I, just giving us a little look. Yeah, it's right? not a, it's not 100% uh, in depth detail, but yeah. You can get a few of the main points off of it, but yeah, I'm, I'm totally capable of teaching somebody. Yeah. Okay, Steve. So where are we at now, brother? Okay, so this is the last part here before I lay it down on the ground. You want to take your tail. This is this label right here is actually the tail end of the canopy. This is at the this is the center of the canopy. It's going to be behind me, above my head. So you're looking at the top skin now. So this is the top of the parachute. I'm going to wrap it around the pack job. You want to contain. You want to contain all of those, all those stacks you just made inside. Try not to mess it up. We're going to be S folding this thing into a tiny little bag, and it is my least favorite part of the pack job, actually. Sometimes it goes well. Sometimes it's messy, but it always opens. Okay, so you're actually okay. Yeah, so that's starting to get a lot smaller. Yeah, well, I gotta fit in that black bag there. <laughs> this whole thing. Oh, all that's gotta fit in that little guy? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I'm about to put it down on the ground. So I have my entire pack job right here. This is the part you do not want to mess up. Just to avoid premature wear and tear. And possible, you know, malfunctions okay. so Steve I'm gonna ask you a question um, have you have you ever been known to uh, or, or should I say is it prohibited for you guys to drink or you ladies to drink while you're doing this oh absolutely are there laws written laws against this I think they're more so drop zone rules it probably all falls under the FAA kind of thing. Well, it, 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 it's only common sense that we don't drink and drive, drink and ride motorcycles, drink, drink and do motor, motor sports, uh, or, of course. or water sports. Uh, now, obviously, common sense says let's not drink and parachute. Of course. Right? I'm just wondering if there's laws against it, or like, or, or is, is this a trust? <laughs> an well, honor system. It is an honor system, but I can tell you one thing. If you're caught doing it, you will not be welcome uh, back wherever you did it. Right. Okay, so this is also something that's not cool within the group of people. Yes. Precisely. 
You're not one of the cool kids. No, no, dr no drugs or alcohol while you're jumping. So right now you want to get all the air out of it. Because like I said, this has to go inside this deployment bag here, which is quite Which small. obviously, to, to what I'm watching that, I'm thinking, okay, well that's your deployment bag. If it doesn't come out properly, we, we've got problems, right? Well, if you don't do this correctly, you can just get line twists. Like I said, it's mostly the wear and tear. That's a common misconception. Um, people always ask, well, what if your parachute doesn't open? Like, they're designed to open. Yeah. Okay, so this is the deployment bag that I'm gonna fit this main parachute into, but first we gotta cock the pilot chute. This pilot chute is a collapsible pilot chute, meaning it, once it's finished doing its job, it collapses to create less drag, uh, meaning it's not gonna be inflated behind me. Uh, creating turbulence or whatever. I'm just gonna grab the handle, hold this, pull the string that's inside of this bridle as tight as it'll go, like that. And now we have a functioning pilot chute. This is what extracts the deployment bag out of the container which opens the main parachute. Just double check to see if it flies, which it looks to be looks to be functional now okay this is uh, the part that I like the least as I was mentioning before this is where we take our sausage main parachute here all nice and sausage like we got to s fold it a few times but first we got to get the, the air out of it we need to s fold it a few times and shove it into that what's an s what is an s fold it is this I'm gonna try and do this quickly because it fills up with air after I don't like this part. That's the first S fold. Just gonna try and get my knee on it. And this is the second S fold here. You just fold it like an S. And you want to try and contain all of this fabric in between your knees somehow. Tons of different methods of doing this. You just want to pick the method that is the least sloppiest, most comfortable, so to speak. Great ways. Pulling this bag around it all. See what I mean about keeping the air out of it? sloppy. It'll work. It'll work. I'll jump this. You don't feel like your life is going to be at risk? Your life's always at risk. <laughs> Good point. But no, I feel confident. Well, we shouldn't say that till the job, pack job's over. Now, take this bag and we want to make our first stow we want to come around here. Wait. So we want to stow. This will be our locking stow. This is actually held shut with regular old elastic bands. <clears throat> we take it. You don't want to rub that on the fabric because it causes wear. You just take that. Lines in your hand and you stow it. Inch, inch and a half. That looks like two to me. It'll be fine. You just want to make them all the same. Okay, I got the first stow, first stow done here. We're just going to go ahead and do our four locking stows. And by locking stows, they're called locking stows because I got it going through the grommet on the D-bag closing flap. And I'm stowing the lines. Same thing, inch and a half, two inches. Should be good. You just want to take up all your slack and your lines. Nice and neat. Okay, so when I'm looking at these lines, this is how, are they gonna be 
On the outside or are they packed inside? Everything's on the inside of the container. You don't want any of this in the uh, in the atmosphere. In the relative wind. <clears throat> so your last locking stow, you want to get all the slack out of there because there's cascades here. Your lines cascade. So you just want to shake it like that. And get it in there. Again, keeping all the stows roughly the same. So the locking stows are done. I'm going to pick this thing up and put it in between my legs like a little penguin here. <laughs> and these are just regular stows. Because it's a different size elastic, this is a personal choice. I like to double stow. So I have these. a question about those elastics. Because I, for what I know about elastics, elastics break easily and uh, you know they get a little old and they've been hanging around a little while and then, oh, that one snapped. Are these like heavy duty uh, elastics? Are these industrial grade? Or? Nope, these are your everyday Staples Business Depot probably. Uh, they do break from time to time and I got an entire bag full of them. Okay. We just replace them as they break. And I'm just gonna keep running these lines up, nice and neat. So these ones you can do a little less than an inch and a half, two inches. Think about it in reverse, it opening. They, the weight of that pilot chute I'm dragging behind me, the one that we cocked earlier. These things all just pull, it just pop, 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 pop. The bag when it opens it just rocks like that and everything comes out the opposite way in which I put it in here. Maybe you can think about that. Slightly mind-boggling for myself. <laughs> it is. I'm sure you'll get to see some video on some opening deployments. That'd be cool. So now we want to leave 12 to 18 inches or that much, whatever that is. That looks good to me. Just doing it by eye now. We're going to flip this over without twisting it to our container, the main tray. And this is where I can kind of show you a little bit about the reserve. Well, here we have. So is that your reserve that I can see that little right there? So it is, yeah. If I move these out of the way for you, yeah. this right here yeah. is the entire reserve. Tell us about the reserve chute. So here's your closing loop. I'll show you the main closing loop because we're going to go through it. But when you open, when you pull your reserve handle, this pin gets pulled through and it releases this, this closing loop. This round black thing right here is the top of the spring loaded pilot chute, which pops out and starts to extract your, your reserve parachute here. Um, reserves are, they expire every 180 days. You have to get them repacked by a certified rigger, whether you use it or not. Um, I myself can't repack these. I'm not. I don't have the uh, rigger course under my belt, but I can pack my main. I was taught through the course how to pack the main, so that's what I shall do. I just got a fresh repack on this anyway, so I'm good for the season. And how long does that last? Uh, they're right. 180 days from oh, the right. back job, is, yeah. yes. which is a half a year. Okay, so there's a question that's uh, bouncing around in my head right now. Is 180 days, eat whether you jump or not, and cause are you guys jumping in the winter? Uh, or is that absolute insanity? In Canada, I think there's a couple places that might operate in the winter if the, if the runway is frozen enough but like we get the weather here that is kind of unpredictable and for the most part lousy through the winter. Uh, we generally don't, but a lot of Canadians flock down to Florida and other various drop zones down in the Southern States, even Mexico actually. There's a boogie in Puerto Vallarta, Puerto Vallarta that uh, does a nice, uh, they call them boogies or skydive parties. They do it in uh, late January, early February. And that's a good little vacation to get away to. 
nice jump, jumpcation, if you will. Uh, let me toss me that bag there, Rob. So you need one of these to close your mane. It's called a pull-up cord. It's basically a shoelace, a silk shoelace. You got your closing loop, which is attached to the rig. This is what I showed you in the reserve. You're just gonna loop your, your shoelace through there and basically hold it back. You can tuck it somewhere, you could tie it to something. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm zooming in on your wedding band. What's your wife think of this? <laughs> she uh, regularly encourages me to, to go golfing more. <laughs> <laughs> but she's okay with it because I was doing it, I guess, long before I met her too, so. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that, but. When we're placing the D bag in the container, you wanna make sure your main your main tray here is nice and flat, nice and square, nice and open. You want to spread all this slack, spread all these slack lines out a bit. You want to stick this thing in here kind of on a 45 degree angle like that. Meaning the lines face down always, right? So 45 degree angle like this, you kind of want to wedge it in there. You can grab a hold of your closing loop now. You can lift up on the reserve tray and help it shove in there nicely. Now the way wings, this is the manufacturer who builds this container, they want you to close the closing sequence for this particular container or any wings container is the bottom first. So as you're tightening this up, you wanna shove all your fabric in Make sure it's nice and even. I'm gonna use your knees and your own weight. Try and get it in there. Get the tip of your closing loop through here. Get your knee on it so it doesn't move. And then next is the top. So you close bottom, top. Pull that closing loop through. Put your knee on it. You prep this bridle a little bit. Then you want to close your right side. Next. And again, clean your container up a bit. Tuck everything in nice. Redo all your housekeeping. <coughs> and you want to close your left side to last. And I'll show you why. Now I'm right-handed. There are rigs out there built for left-handed people or your pilot chute will be on your left side if you're left-handed. Mine is on the right. So here we got our bridle. We're going to extend this over here. This is your closing pin. We take this and we shove it. I don't have this pulled up enough. Take this and we shove it in between. I'm slipping here. Bear with me. In between your closing loop, and that holds your container shut. Now you want to pull this out of here. Important you don't forget this in here. It'll lock your container closed. And now your container is closed. And your deployment bag will not come out until you pull this pin. When this pin comes out, uh oh. <laughs> Don't say uh oh. Malfunction. When this pin comes out, that's when everything opens and everything you just saw me do happens backwards and that's how the parachute opens. Within obviously within seconds. Yes. So now that you've got all of that packed, we talked numbers. Not that uh numbers are that important but it just uh for myself you mentioned 2200 us was just for the uh 
red part, which is just the actual chute. Yeah, so we were talking about how much the main is worth. Brand new, if you buy a main, uh, Performance Designs builds this particular main. And they're all pretty comparable. Uh, call it two grand, US, everything's in US dollars for this, in this particular sport. Um, that was just for the main only. Uh, reserves typically run the same, which is separate from the main, so you can add two to that. So now you're looking at four. If you're, we're talking brand new numbers here. Uh, so there's four thousand just on on nylon. Your container, which is everything you see here on the outside, the backpack part with the harness and everything. So yeah, talking about numbers here, I mean, brand new, so your, your main might be two grand, your, your reserve is about two Gs, so we're up to 4,000 just in nylon. This part here, your container, which contains everything, you have your reserve and your main down here. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I paid 1,800 bucks for this, brand new, and that was with a discount. Um, so there you can add another almost two Gs, so now we're sitting at about six. Um, AADs are optional. That's what's known as a automatic activation device. Some drop zones let you jump without them. Um, other drop zones tell you it's mandatory to have them. And what it is, is it measures the pressure. You turn it on, obviously, it's battery operated. The one I have, I think, last 20 years, it doesn't need service every year, every so many years, like some do. It's, it's battery operated, it, uh, it reads a pressure, the current pressure, and whatever it's set to, when you turn it on, it reads the pressure you're at above sea level, and uh, it's set to a hard deck, and if, say, somebody gets knocked out in free fall, and I'm not able to open my reserve, which is this handle here, or reach my, sorry, my main, if I'm not able to reach my main handle, which is right here, or my reserve, it will automatically, based on the pressure, read the altitude, and at, I don't know, it's like a thousand feet or something, whatever you have it set to, it will cut the closing loop to your reserve parachute, and it will open it for you, if you're unconscious or not. And that's this little device right here. And you gotta turn it on before every jump with this button. I can run you through the sequence. It says hello. You have to press it three times, uh, basically when the light flashes so that you can't accidentally turn it on. It goes through its configuration, setup, flash, flashes green, says enjoy, it's good to go. So right now, it's turned on. Uh, it's a great last resort, it's insurance if you will. Um, if you're jumping with big groups of people, they're good to have. It's a last resort, I mean, let's face it, we're doing something dangerous anyways, why not have the assurance that you will have some sort of nylon above your head in the event you get knocked out. Well, because like for me, that's interesting because uh, anxiety plays a part in a lot of people's lives, including my own. And that's one thing I think about is, would I faint if when you jump? right and that's yeah. that's the insurance that if you did pass out or faint yeah definitely wow sure. so maybe i'll go, let's hey you know what let's so, go yeah. jump quick little rundown this is your this is my cutaway handle that'll cut away your main parachute which releases these three rings well it releases these two the big ones stay attached to the uh to the container and these two are attached to your uh risers when you pull this cutaway, this yellow cable gets is attached to your handle. This gets pulled out, this gets pulled out. These come loose, your main parachute goes away in the event of a malfunction, you can cut it away. In which case, you go straight to your reserve handle. Um, and yeah, if you can't make that, that's what this baby's for. My main, Your main handle that you're always gonna go for is this hacky right here. This is what you're reaching for. That activates your main. Nice little ball on there, easy to reach. And That's your and, pilot chute. And, and feel for? Pilot chute's all packed in the bottom here, nice and safe. 
And that's it. I think it weighs in at, uh, I don't know, 23 pounds or something, my particular rig. Yeah, it doesn't look like a lot. It looks, no? wow, it looks small. There are way smaller ones out there. This is a 150. Parachutes, I think the smallest parachute being flown in the world right now is like a 60 something, maybe a 50 square feet. Wow. And that's 150, so. It's a pretty novice setup. I mean, yeah. Well, Steve, what time that's is it? it? It's time to go jump.